Well, the, the custom auto situation was a bit strange. Mm. Because Custom Auto ran a school for boys. Yes. And in the movie, there was a woman that was always with him, which we assumed was mm. his wife. Right. But that was not his Camille. wife. Camille, yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't. No, it was not. No. This man was never married, mm -hmm. had no children, and ran a school for boys. Yes. Interesting, yeah. I mean, I, I went, when I got the role... I went to that house. I went to the Catskills on my own, put myself right on that doorstep, and I pleaded. I said, look, this movie's going to happen. Please give me your side of it, because I only have one side. Mm -hmm. There's things in this movie. It, there was a scene where uh, um, Teddy Atlas supposedly pulls a gun on him and said that, Mike Tyson ran and shrieked and actually cried. I said, I don't believe that. I got a meeting with Teddy Atlas and I asked him. I said, well, what did Mike, what did he really do? And he said, well, he kind of looked at me defiantly. I said, aha, uh -huh. yeah, okay. That's, you know, it's, you know he, it says he ran, ran away and cried in the movie. In, in the, it's right here in the script. There was all these things that I'm going, uh-uh, I don't believe this. Because guess what? A surfer dude wrote the script, man. <laughs> It was like, this guy, I was like, when I found out who wrote it, it's like, that dude wrote it? Like, what does he know about, you know, I mean, there was so many things that was like all over the place in that movie. We had, like, I come to set, and they have uh, friends of Tyson dressed up like L.A. gangbangers. I'm like, what? And it's carefree curl <laughs> things on the, I'm like, we didn't have that in New York. We didn't dress like that. We had leads on. We had to change. Oh, okay. You know, and so my thing was like, hey, you know, I'm going to get blamed for it if it's like, if it's some bullshit, you know? Yeah. But so, you know, but then people start, you know, they start listening to me because I'm like, hey, I'm sorry. I was there. I'm, I'm, I'm around at this time. But there was a whole lot of stuff, man. You know, I was like, I was being a detective. And so, it, you know, I just wanted to, I just wanted to portray the truth as I, you know, as best as I could see it. And, mm -hmm. and my boy Frankie was one, one of my best friends. He, he and, um, he and uh, Mike were really good friends. And he put me in contact with Mike while he was in, in prison. Incidentally, me and Frankie, well, we set up, we, we set some other stuff up with Mike with the, this whole K-1 and Bob Sapp thing later. But we, you know, when Mike got out. Everything was all good, you know. Um, there was, we didn't divulge too much of the any craziness that I think Mike was concerned with in the script. Yeah. But, you know, Mike didn't know how much I was like, I was fighting for as much truth as I found out, you know. Yeah, Mike's such a megastar that he just assumes that people will cover him and talk about him and make movies mm -hmm. out of him. Yeah. He's been doing, he's but been I going know, through that I know he was life. concerned that other stuff yeah. would be in the movie that we was like, nah. Mm-hmm.